Do you have dental implants inside your mouth and you're thinking about doing an all on four and you're probably then thinking, hey, maybe I can save some money if I use my existing dental implants for my future all on four. Well, my name is Dr. Daniel Choi here at North Texas Dental Surgery, Wisdom Teeth and Denture Implant Center, and I want to answer that question for you. Um, so basically, well, actually, even before I do that, could you do me a favor and give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it in the end? And also give me a follow on this channel because I'm always trying to create good content about all on four, wisdom teeth, dental implants, anything like that. So, you know, kind of to cut to the chase, the answer most likely may be no, but you still may be able to use those in your future all on four. So let me go over some of the details as to why you may be a candidate for that. All right, so a lot of times people, when they think of all on four, they see images of these like beautiful teeth and the, you know, the beautiful teeth and the gums. And this gets all the glory, but a lot of the times it's actually the dental, well, I mean all the times, it's the actual dental implants within your bone and the what we call the multi-unit abutments on top of that that connect this into your mouth. And just to get a little technical here so I can show you what we're really talking about, here we have a little animation of the implants within your bone, again with these multi-unit abutments, and this is the prosthesis on top of it. Now, in regards to this prosthesis, this prosthesis has to be a certain thickness. If not, then what could happen in the future is that your teeth, if it's not thick enough basically and you're chomping on your teeth all day, what can happen is it can fracture on you. Okay, so actually let me show you another image real quick. Here's an image of a prosthesis, which is zirconia. I just downloaded this from the internet um, and it fractured. And one of the main suspicions I would say is that it didn't have dental implant support over here and also um, it, was, it doesn't appear to be thick enough. And I also created another video talking about how this is likely to happen. I'll put that in the um, description below. Now, because this prosthesis has to be a certain thickness, you know, what we have to do is we need to make sure that we have adequate space within our mouth to be able to accommodate this. All right, so I actually already measured this to be 15 millimeters. So let's use a example, a real life example on a real 3D scan for a patient to see if this would be able to work on a patient who already has existing dental implants. So here's my patient. Uh, she has three existing dental implants. We actually did an all on four on her uh, about five days ago. But, you know, she has three dental implants she spent thousands of dollars on, and we just want to see, all right, can we use these dental implants for her all on four? Now, I didn't place these dental implants, but let's look at her 3D scan. All right, so this is the 3D version of what we were looking at earlier. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at this patient from the side view, what they call the sagittal side view, okay? So on this image here on this 3D scan, we see this tooth from the side. So this is her nose. This is her lip, a lower lip roof of the mouth, you see this dental implant embedded in the bone right here, okay? So with this dental implant, again, remember what we told you that we wanted the dimension of this to be 15 millimeters thick because we don't, again, want it to break. So on this 3D scan, I measured 15 millimeters from the what we call the incisal edge, the edge of the tooth right here, the edge of the tooth right here, and then we measured 15 millimeters down. Now, the problem is that this patient's on their upper implant. You could already see, I've already been through now, let's see. I'm already in about four millimeters through the top of the implant. So what we're seeing right now is that like we just don't have enough clearance for this uh, for us to use this dental implant. I had a patient once asked me, is like, hey, can't you do like, uh, you know, kind of like saw through the top of the implant? Well, one of the issues is that if I did that, where that multi-unit abutment would go through, um, it would lose the ability to make that connection. So let me show you here real quick. She was basically asking me, hey, can I saw through the top of this implant and then get this to still connect in there? And unfortunately, that wouldn't work. You know, We would lose the ability for that multi-unit abutment to connect into the dental implant. So let's look at her other dental implants too, though. All right, so on the lower right dental implant, if we went from the edge of the tooth, measured about 14 millimeters down, you could see, again, we are already through several millimeters of that dental implant, so we would not be able to use that in this case. All right, now we'll look at the last implant, the lower left, 15 millimeters from the edge um, of the crown down, and then you could see, you know, there's several millimeters uh, where we clearly have gone through the, the dental implant, so about six, seven millimeters, so we wouldn't be able to use that dental implant either. Okay, so you may be asking, how do we always make sure that we're going to have that 15 millimeters of where you want the edge of this tooth to be to the dental implant? Well, the truth of the matter is, is that when we actually do an all-on-four surgery, what we have to do is we have to take the teeth out, 
and then we have to actually lift up the gums and we have to create enough space often by smoothing down your bone levels enough to create that 15 millimeters all right so let me actually show you something real quick um, in order, like, and we already discussed earlier, we do not want this to break because if this keeps breaking, then we have a big issue. So we need to make sure that we do your surgery properly. Again, we have to make sure that if we take your teeth out, we clear enough bone to make sure you'll have that 15 millimeters. Now the same actually goes if you're already missing your teeth. If we already know basically where we want the edge of your teeth is to be, um, and you have, we got your teeth extracted six months ago or you never lost too much bone, we need to make sure that we, you know, basically smooth down enough bone. Now, what we want to do is we have to make sure that, you know, we uh, don't affect your vertical uh, dimension, okay, of occlusion. And so what that means is that, like, when I'm biting down, you might not notice, but I actually draw these little dots, drew these little dots on the tip of my nose, uh, tip of my chin here, okay. So what we're going to do here, I just drew on my face to kind of give you guys this example, is I'm going to replicate this on this little cotton swab. And I'm just having a really hard time doing this in the mirror. I mean, in the my you know, image here, looking at the screen. But what we're doing here is we can actually see <laughs> that I'm not going to mess with my vertical dimension of occlusion here. Okay, so it's really hard to kind of do look at this at my screen and like make sure that I'm like replicating this. But however many millimeters this is, I need to make sure that when I take my teeth out, smooth down my bone, and I place my dental implants and put in a set of teeth that I'm not gonna mess with this dimension here, right? So again, if this is gonna be 15 millimeters thick and I didn't bring down my bone enough, basically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna feel like I have too much bulk inside my mouth, okay? So instead of the stick saying that my dimension should be like this, like basically the stick is gonna show, my reference stick is gonna show, wait a second, hey, uh, I feel like I have too much bulk in my mouth and I don't feel like I can, close my mouth properly or even like you know just speak properly those are like you know when your vertical dimension gets altered then that's going to be a problem and that's why we use this reference stick you know to make sure that we don't alter your vertical dimension so that's why it's very important that we remove enough bone well if you have existing dental implants already within your mouth remember i told you a few minutes ago i can't saw through the top of the dental implant because you know i'm going to destroy the connection and then for, for the multi-unit abutment, and also I'm gonna have very little dental implant to be anchoring your bone. Now, there's several other things that I wanna to reference to. Um, the other issue is angulation of the dental implants, right? So um, is the angulation good? Now, one thing is that we can usually compensate for that by using multi-unit abutments that come in many different angles. So um, usually that's not that big of a deal. Another bigger issue, though, is for all on four. What system was the dental implants? Now, the thing that drives us nuts is that there's so many systems of dental implants out there. There's thousands of them, right? And they all love to use their only like their own parts and pieces. Okay. So number one, whenever we're doing an all on four, we need to make sure, like I showed you earlier in the video, the multi-unit abutments, right? So, the like, does your company have multi-unit abutments? Right. So and then also we have to make sure that we have the associated parts, the drivers, the screwdrivers, the torque wrenches, all that stuff. So that's another thing because of the parts compatibility issue. It can be frustrating sometimes because like if you already have existing implants and they are already buried deep enough, um, then basically I need to be switching back and forth from my drivers. Like, you know, we use Neodent here. Um, it's a very common system for the all on four. It's a great dental implant. But um, if I'm jumping between parts and pieces, then you're just kind of opening more chances for something to go wrong that we use the wrong driver in the dental implant when you're coming back for cleanings in the future and you just don't want to mess with you know maybe stripping a screw or anything like that so to sum it up like you know again we have to make sure if you want to you, you know if you want to use your existing dental implants then you're going to have to make sure that your dental implants were deep enough for them to be able to restore this properly. You know, if you have to have a thick enough prosthesis, then, you know, again, like you don't want to have an issue where your vertical dimension gets altered and you can't really close your mouth as properly as, you know, you normally would. So, you know, maybe that can develop long-term issues. So if one last piece of advice. Now, if you want to use dental implants, like, you know, your teeth aren't a wreck yet and like, you know, you don't need to jump into it all for now and you think, hey, do I want to use like these dental implants in the future? You have to tell your dentist. What they could do is they can bury the dental implants deeper. 
you know, usually that's a little tough. Um, and again, where we place the dental plan, implants, if they're in the back um, or you don't have existing teeth around the area, then it's a little bit easier to do that. But you can't just sink a dental implant super deep when it's between two other teeth. That can lead to other issues, grabbing the impression, stuff like that. Um, and also you want to use a dental implant system that is going to be, you know, ubiquitous for all on four. Um, Neodent, Nobel, those are like two highly recommended dental implants um, to make sure that you have future parts compatibility. So hopefully this information was helpful for you guys. Again, if you saw this and you think it's a good video, please give me a thumbs up and give me a follow on my channel. Thanks you. Thank you. I really appreciate it.